everybody. TW here. Let's do a little bit of loading. I've got this new mold. But you guys have seen it's the NOE 454-375. And it casts these, these big giant behemoths. I've got these cast up with uh, clip-on wheel weights. And I did them with the cup point. So this isn't that big giant hollow point. This is the cup point. So it's uh, it's not going to be quite so grenade-esque. And uh, we're going to load them in the 450 Bushmaster. Now data is an issue. Because there is no data for such a heavy bullet. Um, I hunted around and looked around and searched a little online today. And I actually had the closest data I could find. Closest bullet weight that I could find in a Western manual. And I've got, the, this is edition number one. I've got the more recent one, but it's exactly the same. Um, and it shows 450 Bushmaster. And the way they do stuff, it's pretty neat. They, uh, they of course, only list their powders. That's the way manuals are. They only list their, their stuff. But it lists accurate number nine enforcer, which is what I wanted to try. Uh, 4100, 5744, and 1680. Now, 5744, I've used before in the Bushmaster, and it's worked really good for me with cast bullets. So, instead of Enforcer, I decided to use 5744. Another advantage is looking at the heaviest bullet, which happens to be a 325 grain. The highest velocity they're getting is about 1600 feet per second with Enforcer. But with 5744, they're getting 1740. So you get a little more velocity out of 5744. Um, I'm loading this in the Bushmaster, I'm sorry, in the Ruger American. So although you always want to watch your manuals and follow your manuals and you know use those as your targeted maximums, it's nice with this particular caliber because the Bushmaster, the 450 Bushmaster, is loaded relatively low pressures. It's, it's under 40,000 cup. And that Ruger American is loaded with cartridges up over 60,000 cup. Okay, so you've got a lot of room for error. I'm not telling you to load it up. I'm telling you, you've got a lot of strength behind your loads. So you don't have to quite so worry about knocking at the door of the maximum side. Don't be careless. Always follow safe, safe stringent uh, reloading practices. You know, start low, work up slow. But it's nice to know when you're dealing with a, a gun like an AR-15, you're knocking at the door of what that action can take with most calibers that it's loaded for. And that's about 50,000. Now, you also have to know there's a lot of different things going on. 50,000, 52, 55, you know, it's not just a figure, okay? It's it's a figure based on that cartridge. And the biggest contributor to that is head thrust. That means the pressure that the cartridge generates is focused on the size of the head of the case on that bolt rearward. Also all the way around. But it's, it's forced rearward against those lugs. That's your weak point. The, the steel that the barrel's made out of is your strong point. That's, that's, your, that's where your strength is. That bolt going back and forth is the weak point of the whole action. That's where it's going to fail first. So you've got a 375 head, you know, 3.375 diameter on a, on a 223 case. With, with let's just say, 50,000 PSI hitting rearward, you take a, a Bushmaster and you've got a 473 sized case head. So you've got probably a 20% bigger, 17% bigger case head. So the fact that this produces less pressure than a 223 is basically because of that case head and, and how this cartridge works to keep it safe on an AR-15. 
you don't have that to deal with. You don't have that constraint to, to hold you back on a bolt action rifle. So again, I'm not telling you to load it up. I'm telling you this is, this is um, margin for error. We don't have data for this bullet weight. This bullet weighs about 354, 355. And of course you should know that it's gonna vary based on the alloy that you're casting your bullets with. The harder your alloy, the lighter the bullet's gonna be. The softer your alloy, the heavier the bullet's gonna be. So I need to extrapolate to determine my loads. Now this is definitely more advanced. I'm not gonna tell you what to do just like I'm not showing you the entire loading process here because of YouTube's regulations and rules. I can't do that. I'm just showing you bullet seating. That's all we're going to do today. I've already got the, the powder charge. I've already got the cases sized. And all the other steps that I haven't talked about are all done. So all we're doing is, is seating a bullet. That's it. We're not producing total ammunition. There's more steps to do. We're not manufacturing ammunition. There's more steps that need to be done. We're just going to talk about the cartridge and we're going to seed a couple of bullets. One step out of many that are required to, to manufacture ammunition, which we're not allowed to show. So I took 300 grains and I wrote down the charges. This is how I figure out, get an idea of where I'm going to start with powder charges when I don't have any data. So I take known good data for lighter bullet weights, and then I average the differences, take into consideration the weight increase, factor that in across the board of the other two bullet weights, which in this case are 300 and 325. I'm going 350, 25 grains, 25 grains. It's a percentage, it's a normal step we're gonna arrive at a figure. 300 grain bullet with this powder was about 35, a little over 35 grains, maximum load. 325, the maximum was also 35, but a few tenths less. If I drop down to the last bullet weight with this was 250, so it's 50 grains less. So twice as much, twice as far, twice as much of a a drop in weight, it jumped up four grains. So four grains more powder for 50 grains less bullet. So that gives me an idea. You're about two grains per 25, two grains of powder per 25. Now that it's, it's a, it's going to be greater at a lighter bullet and less as a heavier bullet. So as we get down 200 grains, it might go to three so coming up to 350 might go down to one and a half. So you always want to err on the side of caution. So what I did was I decided 33 was my sensible maximum. I can still go up after I shoot these and determine that they're safe. If I shoot one and find out that I've got pressure signs, I stop. Don't shoot it. I determine what I'm going to do based on those pressure signs. If they're serious, I might not shoot the next lower charge. I may go drop down two, large, two charges down. I varied these by five tenths of a grain, so half a grain. So 33, 32 and a half, 32, 31 and a half, 31, 30 and a half, 30. Started at 30 grains, stopped at 33. That was my ladder. Five cartridges of each bullet of each powder charge, all with the same bullets, all seated to the same length, all crimped the same. And we're going to try them and see. Um, a chronograph is your friend. Um, experience reloading is, is going to benefit you here. You're going to have to know what to look for. Um, in a case of a bolt action, um, hard, stiff bolt lift. Um, in the case of any firearm, a different report, the, the, the sound, the, the noise. If it's a crack instead of a boom, if it changes, you know, you've got something going on. If it's really loud, okay, you've got something going on. Um, based on previously fired rounds from the same gun. 
those all those things work to your benefit and you need to be aware of them. So when you're dealing with cartridges that are under 40,000 cup PSI, and they're two different numbers, but we're just going to consider them the same for the sake of our argument of our conversation here. You generally don't see a lot of pressure signs under 40,000 with, with most rifle stuff. And that's because the brass is thicker, the, the primer cups are thicker, and they can withstand that kind of pressure without flattening out or without um, expanding noticeably, violently. Um, predominantly different than a couple of 10, maybe even 5,000 PSI less. Um, cup, up, copper units of pressure less. Um, so, know your... If you're seeing serious pressure signs with a cartridge like this, you're well above, most likely, well above where you should be and need to back down. Stop shooting that. Go pull those bullets. Start over. Re reconnoiter what you did because you're, you're a little off. So you should not, we should not see any serious pressure signs evident on these cartridge cases. Or hard bolt lift or large report, you know, any of those things. We shouldn't see any of that. So it's kind of hard to tell exactly where you are. This is where a chronograph comes to benefit. Looking at the velocities that they're getting is going to tell you about where you should be. So let's go back over and look what, what it said. So we go back to 325 grain, and we'll just look at maximum loads just because it's going to be a constant. We had 1,740 feet per second with a 325. We had 1,810 with a 300, and we had 2,050 with a 250. So, let's just say 100 feet per second. 125 feet per second. So if we can see 1,600 flat, 1,600 feet per second, we're probably about at our pressure level. Now, that's very vague because there's fast barrels there isn't, and there's slow barrels. It's not a rule, it's, it's a guide. But it's more information that we add into the whole equation to tell us where we're comfortable. Okay, you're gonna use your experience where you're comfortable stopping. Always err on the side of caution, so if things are looking iffy for you. Remember, we're in no man's land. Don't stop there. Don't do stop there. Don't advance from there. Matter of fact, back off a little bit. Just on the side of caution. And maybe stop there. 10%? You decide. You're in charge. These are guides. These are what I do. So let's let's see a couple bullets here. We got we're probably close to 10 minutes. Let's see. Oh, we're 13 minutes. Again, we, we've already got the powder charge, so I'm just looking in there to see the powder charge. We're going to put a bullet in. These cases are totally prepped and ready for this operation. Many steps before this. Over to the crimp. Start it. I like to spin them and do them a few times just to make them balanced. And there we go. There's more that I have to do, so this is not ready to go, but this is done with this step. 450 Bushmaster, 350 grain, 355 grain, cup. I don't know why my lighting is so bad. I should have really good lighting down here. Am I standing in it? Maybe a little bit. Seems dark to me. Anyway, there we go. I wanted to take you along for the ride. I haven't done a video on 450 Bushmaster in a while. Here we go. 5744 powder. CCI 400 primers. You arrive at your powder charge based on your experience. You can use some of the stuff I gave you as some guidelines. And be safe. Have fun. God bless everybody. CW out!